One thing that I have always regretted as a chess player is missing out on the 1972 match of Bobby Fischer versus Boris Pasky, the match of the century. It was really one of the most interesting and intriguing matches that ever took place. A single American destroying the entire Soviet chess school. I have always prayed to God to take me back 41 years in time so that I could witness the drama and the tension live. Well, of course, to go back in time is impossible. But God was kind. He answered my prayers in the form of the match Anand vs. Carlsen in 2013 and that too in India. It is one of the best match of the 21st century and it is youth versus experience. The world number one takes on the world champion. I am I'm not such a strong player to make prediction about the match as to who will win or who will lose. But what I have done is that I have carefully studied the 62 games that each of Anand and Carlson have played against each other. And based on that, I have tried to find some of the traits, the weakness or the strengths of each of the player. And in this video, by using those examples of their games, I would like to bring towards you the strengths and the weaknesses and what can you expect from each of them in this match. So let's have a look. Vishwanathan Anand has a current rating of 2775. However, when he has the initiative in the position, his ELO is way higher. He keeps on creating threats to the opponent in such a way that the opponent has no time to actually try to counter attack. In a way, he attacks you on the queen's flank, then on the king's flank and before you know it, the game is already over. Let's take an example of how Anand demolished Carlsen when he had the initiative. This position was reached between Anand White against Carlsen in Amber 2008. It was a blindfold game and over here it's white to play. Anand has already got a small advantage because of his better organization of pieces. However, you can just see the energy with which he conducts the play. He has the initiative here and he begins with b4 attacking the black knight. Now of course if the black knight retreats then white will play d into c6 with an extra pawn attacking the knight. So black played e4 and Anand just calmly re retreated his bishop to e2. Carlson could now play his knight to d7 or b7. He chose to go to b7. But if he had gone to d7, then after d6, queen b8, c5, white would have a very strong passed pawn on d6. So Anand, so Carlsen decided to blockade the d-pawn and went to b7. And Anand, not being afraid of anything, simply picked up the a7 pawn. Now, is this a blunder? because the black rook can just move to a8 and trap the white queen. Well, Anand had it all worked out. After rook a8 played by Carlsen, Anand played a very nice little move d6 attacking the queen. And now the queen has to control both the b7 knight as well as the b6 pawn, which is not possible. So black took the queen and after d takes c7, White has an extra pawn and the pawn is on the 7th rank. But Carlson played rook to c8. Now he attacks the c7 pawn and asks Anand what exactly has he achieved by his play of queen into a7 and d6. Anand 
comes to the rescue of the c7 pawn with an excellent combination. He first plays c5, a very strong move. Of course, rook into c7 is off question, out of question because of c into b6. So black in the game took the pawn on c5. But if he had played b5, then Anand would have brought another pawn with a4 attacking the pawn on b5 and after c b into a4 b5 the pawn just keeps moving forward and after c into b5 c6 the knight on b7 cannot move because of rook b8 check you can see how powerful moves are made by anand okay carlson took the pawn on c5 and Anand simply moved his pawn ahead with b5. He is now threatening to play b6 and hence the pawn on b5 had to be taken. cb5, knight b5 and Carlsen took rook takes a2. Black is even a pawn up in this position but of course the c7 pawn is now alive and Anand made the wonderful move bishop f1. His idea is now to bring the bishop from h3 and queen the c-pawn. So black had to play g5 in order to meet bishop h3 with g4. And a very, very excellent move by Anand was made over here. He figured out that all of black pieces are passive except the rook on a2. And so he decided to exchange the rook with a1. Rook a1, rook takes a1 and rook captures back. Now the threat is to simply come rook a7 followed by knight d6 when white is simply winning. So Carlsen saw no nothing better but to return the piece with knight d8 and after cd8, rook d8, knight c3. White was a piece up and won the game after a few moves. You could just see that right from the move number 22 up to the move number 31, that's almost 10 moves were made by Anand with such great energy. And that's why I say whenever he has the initiative, he becomes a very dangerous player. There is a story of Vishwanathan Anand that when he was young, he used to play a lot of blitz in his chess academy. He used to play blitz day and night. However, there was a rule while playing blitz. The rule was winners to stay. It would mean that once you lose a match, there would be a lot of players waiting in the queue to play and you would have to go back and wait for all those players to play and only then your chance would come. That would mean that once you lose, you would have to wait for almost one or two hours to get back your chance. And Vishyanan never liked to wait. And hence, he always tried to fight on the board and try to save his position even when he was worse. And it was this training which helped him to become a very tricky defender. He always tries to defend in a tricky manner. Hence, Carlsen has to be very careful when he has a better position in the match because Anand is a wily fox. He will not try to defend passively. He will try to take the bull by the horns and try to create as much counterplay as possible. Let's try to have a look at a game in which Anand was pushed to the wall by Magnus Carlsen and he fought back with some very tricky defensive ideas. Carlsen vs. Anand, Linares 2007. The position reached is quite symmetrical. However, White has the initiative here, that is Carlsen, has the initiative because his two bishops are very menacingly placed and so is his knight. It's Anand's move here, black to play. White's main threat is to take on f6 
and after g f6 to take the pawn on h7 when he will be a pawn up as well as forking the rook on f8 and the pawn on f6. Of course the most natural move to make in this situation would be h6 but after bishop into f6 if now h into g5 then bishop into g5 and white is simply a pawn up and if you play g into f6 then after knight h7 black still loses his f6 pawn so anand was faced with a very tricky situation as to what should he do and believe me when i say that anand is an extremely tricky defender he played the simply amazing move over here that was king to h8 when i saw this move for the first time i just couldn't believe it what was the purpose of this move to understand it you need to go really deep well let's just start off with the most natural move if bishop into f6 which was not played by carlson then g into f6 knight h7 is met with rook g8 this was the point of bringing the king to h8 was actually to free the g file for the rook now the pawn on g2 is attacked and after a move like g3 king comes to g7 and the h7 knight is trapped quite amazing isn't it carlson saw this trap and he decided not to take the knight on f6 he first saved his g pawn with g3 now again his threat is the same bishop into f6 followed by knight h7 and now rook g8 is no longer strong because the pawn is on g3 anand played h6 now look at the small change that has occurred because of g3 after bishop into f6 anand was able to play h into g5 yeah of course if g into f6 then knight h7 and white will simply win the pawn knight into f6 but after h into g5 the very funny thing is that bishop into g5 is no longer possible because of f6 and wherever the bishop goes it is trapped this was the drawback of the move g3 such a minute detail was noticed by anand and so after h into g5 white had to retreat bishop b2 and after rook a c8 the worst days were over for black and he in fact even managed to win the game with some excellent end game play you could see how trickily anand defended the position and he noticed every little change that was made by his opponent to suit himself and thus carlson needs to be really very aware when he has an advantage because anand will defend very very tenaciously magnus carlson has played a lot of side lines against very strong players trompowski close sicilian alekhine's defense are to name a few however his result against vishwanathan anand has always been very poor when he has played the side lines i don't exactly know the main reason for this but i have a feeling that when you play a side line against a player who has played for the world championship matches for so many times it's asking for trouble Carlson would do well to play the main lines or let's say the semi main lines. Let's see an example in which Anand chooses uh, Carlson chooses a rare line in the Catalan and Anand knows exactly what to do. He not only equalizes but snatches over the initiative and as we know once Anand has the initiative it's all over. 
Carlson was his Anand, Mains 2008. Carlson began as white with d4, knight f6, c4, e6, g3. His aim was to play the Catalan opening. To d5, bg2, bishop e7, knight f3, castle, castle. Anand went for the open Catalan with dc4, queen c2, a6, queen c4, b5, queen c2, bishop b7. Now in this position, the main move is definitely bishop d2 as played on numerous occasions by Kramnik and he has wonderful results with that move. But Anand uh, Carlsen went for a relatively side variation with bishop f4 attacking the c7 pawn. The main move in this position is knight d5 and also knight c6 but knight c6 is considered to be a better move and Anand played that. He's now threatening in some lines to take the pawn on d4 as well as knight to b4. Carlson set up a small trap with knight to c3. Of course, Anand knew very well that he must not take the pawn on d4. I can put a small quiz to you as to why the pawn on d4 must not be taken. You can pause the video and think about it. If the pawn on d4 is taken, then after knight takes d4, bishop g2, white has the very strong move rook d1 and after this either the g2 bishop or knight takes e6 both cannot be met and white has an advantage. So Anand continued normally with knight b4, queen to c1 keeping pressure down the c5 and after rook c8 Black was threatening to play c5, one of the main ideas of this opening. If black can make the move c5 in this position, he would have equalized easily. And so, Carlsen must stop that move. He played rook d1, and Anand replied with the natural move, centralizing his knight to d5. White took the knight, bishop d5. Once again, Black is threatening c5 as after d takes c5, bishop c5, there is a threat of bishop into f2 winning the white queen on c1. So Carlson had to make a very artificial move, bishop e3, in order to stop c5. Now Anand once again snatches the initiative. He plays knight g4 attacking the bishop. And after knight e1, bishop takes g2, knight takes g2, he centralizes his queen with queen d5. h3 was met with knight takes e3 and now white has to take back with the queen because if he takes knight h3, queen h5 attacks both the pawn on e2 and h3. And after queen e3, black played c5. An excellent move and he equalized the game very easily. In fact, black already has the advantage in this position and Anand went on to win the game very well, very easily. Anand's play just flowed like a river. Carlsen's attempt to throw him off his game didn't work because Anand knew exactly what he had to achieve. When you play a sideline, more often, more often than not, you are banking on your opponent's lack of knowledge rather than the strength in your position. But Carlsen would do well not to play the sidelines in the World Championship because Anand's feel for the position as well as his experience allows him to make strong and natural moves quite easily. In a recent interview, when Magnus Carlsen was asked what is it that he likes the most about the game of chess, he said, I like to make my opponent suffer. And this he does very well when he has a risk-free advantage. He milks his advantage in the best possible manner. 
he keeps on collecting small advantages and before you know it it's one huge advantage and the win is in the bag now what exactly is this risk-free advantage and how did Carlson manage to get this against a tricky defender like Vishwanathan Anand will be seen in the next game. Carlson vs Anand Arctic Stars Final 2010 This game is a wonderful illustration of what Carlson is good at. He gets a small advantage and he plays the best moves putting most pressure on his opponent until he breaks down. Let's have a look at the game from the opening. White Carlson started off with d4, knight f6, c4, g6, knight f3, bg7, g3, castle, bg2, c6, castle, d5. Now c into d5 is the main move but Carlson usually doesn't like to go into theoretical stuff. He played knight bd2 bishop f5 b3 very natural play knight e4 bishop b2 and Anand here played a very odd move he played knight to a6 of course the most natural move is to develop the knight to d7 but I wonder why Anand chose knight to a6 Carlson played knight h4 knight takes d2 queen takes d2 and now the bishop on f5 has to go back because bishop e4 will be met with f3. So he went back to e6 and Carlsen makes slow and logical move rook c1, queen d7, the knight comes back towards the center to f3, threatening knight e5 maybe in some cases, rook f to d8. And rook f d1, very normal play. After knight c7, Carlson moved his queen to a5, trying to probe the queen side weaknesses of black. Now, Anand played knight to e8, and Carlson secured his position with e3. White has a small edge, and Anand played bishop g4. After rook d2, he gave up bishop into f3, bishop into f3. Look at this position very carefully. In fact, Anand should be looking at this position and trying his level best to not get such a position in the upcoming world championship. White has the two bishops, a wonderful center and nice rooks placed on central files. All in all, he has a small advantage, but most importantly, it's a risk-free advantage. And such an advantage is very, very dangerous against Carlsen, who likes to milk the position. Whenever he has a small advantage, he plays the most, he plays the strongest move in the position and keeps on increasing the pressure on his opponents. The same thing happened in this game. Carlson played a wonderful technical game to score the full point. Hence I say that risk-free advantage is something which Anand cannot afford to give to Carlson. Carlson is known for his middle game and end game play. However, how can one reach an astronomical rating of 2872 without being good in the opening phase of the game? The truth is, Carlsen is an extremely pragmatic and logical opening player. He develops his pieces perfectly to the central squares and controls the center excellently. He does that with great accuracy and consistency. That is the reason why even in unknown positions, he can find out very easily the best moves. In our game that we are going to see, he completely outplays Vishyanand 
in one of the most topical variation of Ray Lopez, the Breyer variation, and he gets a clear advantage. Let's see how he does it. London Classic 2010. Anand was white and Carlson was black. Now imagine that Carlson as black does not know the opening theory. You can just see that the way he plays the game is so logical up till the move till he gets the advantage in the game. He begins with white Anand begins with e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop b5, a6, bishop a4, knight f6, castles. Carlson plays bishop e7, rook e1. Now that the e4 pawn is defended, black has to play b5, bishop b3. Black defends his e5 pawn with d6, now threatening knight to a5, winning the important b3 bishop. So white must play c3 and black castles. In order to play d4, white, some, white must try to stop bishop g4 and hence the next move h3. Now the knight on c6 is in a way in the way of the c pawn moving ahead and also bishop coming to b7. And so Carlson logically redeploys the knight to b8. This is known as the Breyer variation of Ray Lopez and in fact it's very popular. After d4, knight bd7, black played, white over here played knight bd2, bishop b7, just natural developing moves, bishop c2. And how to increase the pressure on the e4 pawn? Yes, of course, the little subtle move, rook e8 putting indirect pressure on the e4 pawn. White can now play knight f1 to g3, but Anand chose to go for a4. This is a relatively less played move and Carlsen played bishop f8. Now the knight on d2 cannot move because the e4 pawn will hang. So white played bishop b3 and black replied with the solid move c6, saving his b5 pawn. Anand played b4. He is looking to develop his bishop to b2. And finally, he would like to play c4 at the right moment when he would have excellent play. Now, Carlson played rook to c8. He is looking at the opening of the c file if white takes a into b5. Of course, here white should play the natural move bishop b2 and uh, black would continue something like knight b6 when we would have a normal position. But Anand took surprisingly a into b5. I think he was expecting black to recapture towards the center with a b5 not to leave a backward pawn on the a5 when he would have penetrated rook to a7. But Carlsen, seeing the c3 weakness, played c into b5. Anand defended it with bishop b2, not understanding exactly what black was looking for because his now next threat is to play d5 followed by c4 when white would have an excellent position. But as I told you, look at Carlsen's pieces. Knight on f6, knight to d7, excellently placed. Bishop is nicely placed on f8, not in the way of any of the pieces. Bishop on b7 is excellent. The two rooks, c8 and e8, also well placed. And the queen, which has good scope on this diagonal. Thus, the position is ripe for opening it up. And Carlsen played the extremely logical move, d5, which I consider to be an excellent move. Now, the position in this position, both sides have their pieces developed, but the one thing which is in favor for black is this horrible b2 bishop. As you will see, after e takes d5, e takes d4, rook e8, queen e8, c4 played by Anand, 
b takes c4 knight takes c4 knight d5 black white had to take knight takes d4 and after knight d4 black was a pawn up and had a clearly better position he later went on to lose the game but uh, that had nothing to do with the opening the opening turned out to be wonderful for black carlson just developed each and every piece of his on the natural square anand is known to prepare exotic ideas with his phenomenal computer preparation and his good team of seconds but don't expect carlson to sit for 30 to 40 minutes with his heads with his hands on his head trying to figure out what is the best way to play he is extremely pragmatic and a logical player and will always choose the most classical and natural moves which often turn out to be the strongest moves in the position this is one of carlson's biggest strength many people say that history doesn't matter when the two players will sit against each other in the match in chennai what has happened before will not matter however i am of a different opinion on this and i think that the fact that anand has not beaten carlson in the last 3 years in classical chess gives carlson a huge advantage psychologically also in their last meet before the world championship match that was in tal memorial carlson crushed anand in 29 moves it was a very very poorly played game by anand but at the same time an excellently played game by carlson let's have a look at that game tal memorial 2013 the last classical game between the two great players carlson who was white played d4 and anand replied with the nimzo indian defense carlson chose the recently very popular line with ng2 and anand played d5 which is the very classical move after a3 bishop e7 white took on d5 now the very logical move would have definitely been e takes d5 but anand surprisingly played knight takes d5 i think this is a very poor move in short anand was not confident about going into the main line and he tried to play a side line carlson was happy he played bishop to d2 and after knight d7 he played g3 his development is pretty coherent black decided to counter the fianchetto with his own fianchetto with b6 but carlson closed the diagonal with knight takes d5 a very typical idea e takes d5 and bishop g2 attacking the pawn bishop went to b7 and after this white ex decided to exchange his bad bishop and played bishop b4 now of course black cannot play c5 because after dc b takes c5 bishop c3 his both the central pawns would be quite weak however if anand were to be playing against uh, some other player he would have gone for this variation because over here he has activity and this active play gives black good chances to equalize but anand play over here was very much not like himself he played extremely passively he played knight f6 castles and now rook e8 white played natural moves rook c1 and black again played a passive move c6 as you can see carlson continued with his natural play whereas anand was trying to play b too sophisticated over here he played bishop to c8 trying to redirect it to f5 
But of course, and Carlsen gave him no such time. He played queen a4, attacking the c6 pawn. And after rook c7, white now turned his attention towards the center with f3. Now the threat is e4. After bishop e6, e4, d, f, e, white has an excellent position. Look at his rooks. His excellent bishop, wonderfully placed knight, and a wonderful queen. Whereas all of black pieces are quite stupidly placed. The rook on a8, the rook on c7, don't know exactly what they are doing. Queen went back to d7, and now Carlsen saw that he could end the game with a flurry of tactical moves with d5, cd, queen d7, rook d7, and knight e6, f e6, bishop h3, threatening the e6 pawn. King f7 would not help because of e into d5, and king h8 was met with e5, knight g8, bishop e6, rook d8, rook c7, d4, bishop d7. And now the white pawn is coming ahead, e6, e7, and white has a completely winning position, Anand threw in the towel. We can say that the last game between the world champion and his challenger was totally one-sided. Anand was not at all himself, and Carlsen simply crushed him. Thus, the mental advantage, or you can say the psychological advantage, is with Carlsen as of now. So my dear viewers, what did you gain by watching this video? I think you got a better idea of the two gladiators that are going to fight for the World Championship match 2013. You also came to know that what are the strengths and the weaknesses of the specific players. Anand is extremely strong when he has the initiative while Carlsen likes to milk small advantages. While Anand is extremely tricky defender, Carlsen is a very logical opening player. And do not forget that the psychological advantage is tending towards Carlsen. There are also a lot of other factors which we haven't discussed, like Carlsen because of his young age has more stamina while Anand, because of playing the past four World Championship matches, has greater experience. And also, Anand is playing on his home turf, whether it will put more pressure on him or whether he will be better able to acclimatize himself is to be seen in the match to come. Whatever be the result of the match, one thing is sure that we as the viewers are going to learn a lot. We'll be able to see new ideas, we'll be able to see great chess moves being played and great games to learn from. Thus, I think finally chess will be the one that gains the most out of this World Championship match. I hope that you will be able to enjoy this match to the utmost and hope to see you soon. Thank you. Goodbye.